pray the Lord. It's our greeting. And we thank God on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came. And we appreciate God for his love, for his care, for his provisions all the time. He keeps providing whenever a situation is warrant. So, and he does it timely. And so this time we celebrate the day of Pentecost, the day when the Holy Spirit came. And we are going to share a few things about uh, his, I mean, the Holy Spirit coming. And it was a promise fulfilled. One thing that I discover about the Lord Jesus Christ is that everything that he promised was fulfilled. And the day of Pentecost was a fulfillment of sorts. And so we get to Acts of the Apostles, chapter 2. Welcome to the day of Pentecost. And this is what the Bible says in Acts chapter 2. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind and filled the whole house where they were sitting. Then there appeared to them a divided, coming, there divided tongues as of fire and one sat upon each of them and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Praise the Lord. You will read the entire chapter because it's about the coming of the Holy Spirit, the day of Pentecost. But Pentecost was a celebration of sorts. Before this, the Old Testament times has a lot to talk about the celebration. And therefore, the reason why we talk about people gathering in Jerusalem, they had gathered in Jerusalem because they had come to celebrate. Jerusalem was their city. And so they were all there, collected there. And Pente is about, Pentecost is about 50 of sorts. So they were celebrating what they called the Feast of Weeks, 50 days, 50 days after the first fruits. And so it was a celebration. People had collected and had come to celebrate in Jerusalem. And this is when something extraordinary happens. If we had all the time, we could explain what the 50s was all about. But remember the Pente was about 50 and they had the celebration of the first fruits and then the feast of the weeks. And this is something that actually we cannot dive into because of the time that we have. But the point is, they were celebrating. And so at their celebration, when they were all collected in Jerusalem, we had pilgrims, people coming from all over the world, actually. When you read Acts chapter 2, you see people coming from, from Africa, people coming from different nations on earth, and they were all gathered there. And the Holy Spirit descended upon those that were in the upper room, the disciples, the apostles, and they started feeling extraordinary presence of the Lord. And so, one important thing about the day of Pentecost is that they were in one accord. One accord in the upper room. And so it's a lesson that we pick from this, that actually being in one accord is very, very important. Being divided up can mean something else. It's counterproductive, but they were in one accord and expectant because the Lord Jesus Christ had promised that I go and the helper will come. And when he comes, he will empower you. And so they were waiting. They were waiting. And so when they were waiting, remember these people in one place and expectant. All of us are expectant of sorts. I mean, expect lots of things. And so we pray that God gives us the same spirit of one accord as he gave it to these people as they were waiting for the Holy Spirit to come. Now, a few things happened. that The church was filled with the power. And, you know, the house where they were, they were filled. In verse 2, we read and say, suddenly they came from heaven as of a rushing wind, and it filled the whole house. Very important, filled the whole house. Secondly, as it filled the whole house, a strange occurrence occurred. Something happened. They started speaking in other tongues, strange tongues 
foreign languages as the Spirit enabled them. And you know what? Importantly, which people miss out when they're talking about tongues, the point is here. Jesus had commanded these people, go ye into all the world and preach to nations. Teach them. How do they teach? How do they preach? How do they edify the church? And so the point that actually this, this point, this speaking in the tongues comes is they were practicing what they were going to do. They were going to nations. They were, going to, they were coming to Africa. They were going to Europe. They were going to places. And so they, the Holy Spirit enabled them to speak in the tongues, those languages. The reason why when we read Acts of the Apostles, the Bible says that the people who were around from all these nations had them speaking in their own languages. People from Cappadocia, people from Mesopotamia, people from Libya, they had these Jews speaking Libyan, speaking Arabic, speaking Cappadocian, speaking Ethiopian, speaking Egyptian, speaking all the nations that were there. And so it was not a bubbling of sorts, but they had them. And so the, more, the important thing here is the Holy Spirit coming and empowering them because Jesus had given them a great commission. In Matthew 28, 19, go ye into the world. So whatever they did, these languages was preparatory for them to be able to, to minister, empowered to minister to other nations, to other people. And so this is actually something that actually people miss out when they're talking about speaking in tongues and, and things like that. But it is... That was critical at this moment here. And there could be other things that we could talk about, speaking tongues, but this is critical. And now, because of what they were doing, the third thing is a large crowd was drawn to witness hearing them speaking. A Jew speaking Arabic, a Jew speaking Libyan, a Jew speaking Egyptian, a Jew speaking and with ease about the mysteries of God. And so when they collected the Bible says Peter stood up and by the end of the sermon, the Bible says that actually 3,000 souls were added. People were converted. In Acts chapter 2, we read all these things. But we celebrate the day of Pentecost as the fulfillment of the prophecies that Jesus had given and even the prophecies that we read about in the Old Testament. So our God is a promise-fulfilling God. So this is something that I as a person, why I will keep him there because God meets, God fulfills his promises that he makes. And you remember in the book of Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, it was the fulfillment of sorts. In Joel, chapter 2, verse 28, he said, afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all people, young, old, that they will... Dream dreams. And so this Holy Spirit comes and is powered on the day of Pentecost. And the day of Pentecost was the fulfillment of sorts that God had promised earlier. So the essence of the Holy Spirit coming on the day of Pentecost was purely for empowerment. Jesus had given an assignment and therefore they needed to be empowered in order to go and speak without fear, to speak without favor, to speak even without any gambrance, maybe language barrier, nothing, because they tested it. The empowerment came on the day of Pentecost and they spoke in, this, in different languages. And the people who were around had, they had them speak God's mysteries in their own, in their own languages. So it was for equipping friends. Jesus Christ sending the Holy Spirit was equipping the church with the power, with ability, in order to be able to be glorified, to be glorified among the nations. Two, that they were to spread the gospel beginning in Jerusalem and beginning home, beginning where they were. And so importantly for you and me, even us, we are preachers, we edify other people. We are meant to go out and share the gospel. But importantly too, is to begin where we are. Because Jesus had promised them that go ye, beginning from Jerusalem. So you as 
an evangelist. Of course, after some time we talked about the fivefold ministry that when he powered the gifts. So we begin where we are. And also these people, Peter and the others, began in Jerusalem and 3,000 people were converted. And the message was powerful. And then they were, the Bible said they were cut to the heart. And so this Holy Spirit conviction is what we yearn these days. We have messed ourselves up by mixing up things and we confuse God's people about the gift of the Holy Spirit. But the Bible is clear. We are talking about the Holy Spirit here for empowerment. Paul explains a little more. And I want to give you an assignment to dive into 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and go into 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Read about what Paul explains about the Holy Spirit work. You'll see how the work of God can flow and flow well according to his order. Holy Spirit work, read again, I'm saying 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14, and you'll see, and even the issues of speaking in tongues, Paul explains it very, very much. And I'll leave that with you because it is important that you need it to know. But Holy Spirit power, although some people misinterpret it in the way that satisfies them, but for us we know he was equipping the church for ministry because where he was not in body form, he sent us an advocate who is limitless, the Holy Spirit. Limitless because you can't see, you know, the Holy Spirit coming. I mean, like, but he feels like this one. They only saw the tongues of fire, but they were being filled. And Jesus talks about the Holy Spirit at, at one moment, says, just like, it's like wind blowing. And when you see the movement, people rushing out to go and preach, people getting saved, then you know, the Spirit of God is moving among the people. And so we get equipped, and the Lord Pentecost brought us, brought us this. And so that God may be glorified among the nations. So spreading of the gospel beginning in Jerusalem, and he did what we call outward focus. Outward focus, how? By giving the languages to these people, to these men and women, so they would go out and preach. So outward focus is what the church is all about. Spreading out, spreading out, spreading out. Begin from where you are and then go, 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 go. All nations is the focus in the scope of the gospel. So we need the necessary power. And it is important, friends, that the Holy Spirit who came on the Lord Pentecost, which we celebrate this day, which we celebrate even today, Pentecost Day, the fruits of the Holy Spirit, yes, and we have this empowerment, but he empowers us, he endows us with the gifts, as we read in Galatians 5, 22. So read there, and you'll see, that actually, a church that is filled with the Holy Spirit must be characterized by what the church does. Is it love? Is it patience? Is it endurance? Is it name it? All those, all those gifts that are explained in Galatians 5, 22. And so as church, we need to prove to the world that there is the Spirit of God is among us. This is something important, 522, and the Bible says, but the, the, the fruit of the Spirit is love, right? Joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against this, there is no law. Now, wow, how shall we show the world that the church is filled with the Holy Spirit? How shall we show? The fruit is here. And so, friends, may God, who started this journey, accomplish And then finally, I want to mention to you that many things have been written, many things have been said, but the birthday, some theologians have proposed it, and it seems to be true, that Pentecost Day is the birthday of the church. Because it is here that actually we see the preaching done and people getting saved. And, and so wherever we go also preach and the salvation continues. So the birth of the church is the Pentecost today. So we started the movement, outward movement, by speaking in tongues. And so it was everywhere going, 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 going. And the church 
has never stopped spreading. It still continues now. And so we preach this because of what started at the day of Pentecost. And the, the fulfillment of what Jesus had promised that don't leave Jerusalem, stay here until you are filled by the power of the Holy Spirit and then you will go. So friends, may the Spirit of God fill us. Fill you, fill me. And when we are filled, we shall have these gifts that we are talking about. Love will prevail. Joy will be. Peace will be. Long-suffering will be. Kindness will be. And all these other, you know, fruit that actually Jesus is, the Bible is talking about. And so may God keep you. May God provide for you. May God in, inhibit you. May God stay in you. May God keep in you the Spirit of God to keep continue moving. And the church to remain relevant in the situations where we are. The church to remain vibrant in the situations where we are. The church to remain focused because our focus is given by the Holy Spirit who is our teacher and our guide. The reason why Jesus had promised the helper will come. He is our helper. May he help you. May he help me. That's so why we continue. The Lord Pentecost brings us this helper in the reality and the church spreads outward and the ministry continues in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <music>